What is going on YouTube? Modsville USA here back with another video on the PlayStation Classic. And if you saw yesterday's video, I was hyping up the new 8-bit Dell wireless receiver for the PlayStation Classic, which I'm still going to get because wireless is nice. However, it is possible. See me scrolling around right now? I am doing this with a DualShock 4 controller. It does work in the boot menu as well as RetroArch, but if we were to go to Bleem Sync, uh, it would not function as of yet, but I'm sure that the developers are going to get this working very soon. Um, however, it does not work at the moment. So another cool thing, I'm going to throw a picture up on screen, is you can use a USB hub to hook up multiple controllers on your PlayStation Classic. If you have the USB hub in the first USB slot and the flash drive in the second, it will be able to detect multiple DualShock 4 controllers or the stock uh, regular PlayStation Classic controllers. You can set up four. Um, if that is something you want, do a four player N64 game. So let's go into RetroArch. There's a few tweaks we're going to need to do. And shout out to uh, David, I believe it is David Gill. Shout out to David Gill uh, for leaving this comment. I had realized that this was possible shortly after posting my last video, but he went through and gave us the details on how to set it up so the analog sticks work. So big thanks to him for coming through with that information. Um, yeah, much appreciated, my dude. Much appreciated. So here we go. Let's um, let's try a PlayStation game. So we're gonna go to Load Core. We're gonna go to uh, PSX Rearmed. Boom. Then we're gonna go Load Content, and we are going to load Media down to ROMs. And then we go PS1 Redump. Boom. And we're gonna play some Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, one of my faves. Ta-da! So once we have loaded the game, we are going to hit both the share and the options buttons. Start and select, basically. Then we're gonna go down to options. And then in pad one, it says default. We'll load that up and go to DualShock. Boom. And if you have multiple controllers, uh, pad two, you would also go to DualShock. Now let's hit options and share again. And now I am browsing around with my analog stick. Oh, that is nice. So let's do a bit of a bit of a level. See how this is running. So this is all pretty much stock. Um, I've got my BIOS files in here, obviously. But I've not done like zero tweaking. And it's working pretty much perfectly. Now would be a good time to mute the game audio. we don't want to hear rage against the machine or whatever hell yeah off to a good start so I'm using the thumb sticks the analog sticks to control this which is nice most games do not work the best with the d-pad feels pretty unnatural for uh, most of us who have been playing games for in the past, uh, what, 20 years? Don't want to control our character with a D-pad when thumbsticks are available. So yeah, there it is. It is indeed working. Now hopefully, I mean, this is off to a good start. I'm sure if this is possible, 
then it will also be possible for um, the DualShock 4 to be working in Bleemcast. Another thing worth mentioning is that this is wired. Um, this is not working wirelessly. However, if you do get that 8-bit dough adapter, it will work wire wirelessly. But I believe there might be some latency issues. Uh, there was a bit of lag with the adapter on the SNES Classic. Uh, so wired is, is no big deal. If you really want to use the stock PlayStation OS, then I'd highly recommend that 8-bit dough adapter. But RetroArch works way better than that anyway, so... You know, I, I really don't see a point in that PlayStation Classic OS. With the SNES Mini and the NES Mini, I would understand because the UI is actually pretty neat, pretty cool, pretty uh, pretty worth playing around in. But, you know, the PlayStation 1 is super bare bones, not that cool. You might as well use RetroArch. And let me know. I had some people coming through and saying that Scan Directory worked for them. Uh, however... I'm calling bullshit on that because literally every other YouTube video I've seen of people messing around in uh, in this beta version of RetroArch for the PlayStation Classic, everyone's loading their games the uh, convoluted way of picking the core, picking the game. Nobody's had playlists in any of the YouTube videos I've seen. So let me know if you got it working and what you did. I showed the way of importing playlists and so forth. Uh, maybe I'll get a bit more detailed. Maybe we'll figure out how to create playlists on another version of RetroArch and modify them so they are pointing to the correct direction. Like maybe we'll set up some playlists on PC. But if you got it working natively in here, um, then please let me know. I'm pretty sure the people who said it works are just trying to troll me but uh let me know get, let's get a poll going does scan directory work for you guys anyway thank you guys for sticking around i really appreciate it um we're getting a whole bunch of subs my goal for this year was to be at 3,000 by the end of the year uh which i didn't think i was actually going to achieve and we've kind of shattered that so um really 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 appreciate you guys thank you guys for watching and uh, see you later with another video. Bye bye.